everybody loves you. <laughs> Brother Buddy, I'd like to give a testimony. Go right here, my wife. Right. My uh, older sister, I talked to her today, the one that we prayed for back uh, in the summertime. Yes. Had the bad uh, surgery thing, and they brought her through that. Today's her 50th wedding anniversary. All right. Uh, so I talked to her on the phone. They had a little party for her. They gave us the invitation, but I told them, I said, the church comes first. And they understood that. That was good. Yeah, praise God. <clears throat> Get up to see her one day soon. But Amen. I, I appreciate all that prayers for my sister now. I really do. Yeah. Glad, that, glad for the answer of prayer on that testimony. By the way, uh, Brother Richard Miller texted me, and um, he said he's doing better. Uh, he said he, but he, think, he estimates it's probably going to take him about a week to get over this. And y'all remember him in your prayer as he's uh, taking his antibiotics and trying to make sure that he takes care of himself and recover from the tonsillitis. And also tonight, Miss Kimmy had come and asked for prayer for Justin's aunt. Her name is Ree. Redeen. I can't remember that. Uh, her name is Miss Redeen, and she lives over on the west side, but she has uh, got the COVID and is pretty serious with her. Y'all remember her in prayer. Uh, is there somebody else tonight? Yes, bro. Brother, Brother Dave, I was there in Baltimore. We met this, this homeless guy named David Davis, and he just come to my mind, but he had mentioned that he pretty much lives on the street. And there was this guy coming by where he was sleeping and telling him that if he catches him there again, he's going to kill him. Oh. So just remember him in prayer tonight. Yeah. David Davis. David Davis. David Davis. David Davis. Okay. All right. Yes, Brother Chris. I just want to praise God. I've got two moms on the same pew today. <laughs> Amen. Tell me there's not a God. Amen. And I'm glad to see my mom. My mom tonight was a little Amen. late getting in, but we're glad to have her. She's uh, obviously wore out. This weekend was rough. Um, I was thinking about all the work that went in. I'm sorry, but I got to go pure road, maybe. But I was thinking about all the work that went into the, the fall festival and how it affected us. And, um, and I think it's because... Uh, uh, Granny had stepped back a little bit, and we learned that uh, all the things that she normally takes care of right. that we had to do in her place. And so uh, we appreciate Granny's work and her leadership, and, uh, and we're grateful that she's here tonight Amen. and able Amen. to be with us. Um, I, yes, ma'am. Hey, I want to thank Ken and Lynn for getting the kids to come and help clean up. Yeah, it that was, that was wonderful. Right. I appreciate that a ton. I appreciate that. Nick's done a good job, too. Uh, amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, it was very, very good. So, um, JoJo? Brother Buddy, I want to thank God. That I'm, like, I'm like Pam. I was telling her this morning that uh, I don't have to do that sleep back. Amen. After, after that, after I told her that, she said, God, God might have took that me. away. All right. But That's I awesome. I want to thank God. Amen. All right, let me lead you in prayer, and I'm going to leave, give it over to Brother Wade tonight. We've asked him to come and bring the message. Come on up here with me, bro. Let's pray together, and we'll ask God to not only touch these requests of prayer, but to touch you in the message tonight. Amen. Heavenly Fathers, I bow before you. Now, Lord, I stand with the man of God that's been chosen for this hour. I pray, Lord, you'd speak through this man, Lord, like he's an instrument. I pray, God, you'd use him and that his words would permeate through all of the strongholds of our spirit and our mind and would break through uh, to plant seeds and fertile ground in our hearts. <coughs> Lord, may we be ready to receive tonight from you. I pray, God, that you would utilize Brother Wade. Lord, I want to thank you for the glorious testimony that was given tonight, Lord, for the, uh, the good times that we've had. And I want to ask God your blessings upon those that we brought up that are in need of prayer. Lord, touch in their bodies. Help them recover them and lord whether it's be living on the street or or whether it's in the sickness in the hospital at, or at home and i pray god that you just lay your hands upon them recover them and bring them back to us soon now lord may we focus tonight for just a while as we hear you speak to us in jesus name we pray amen, amen. god bless you my brother thank you my brother you know, tonight, I got I to gotta say it because I just want, I want to tell him thank you for doing it. But um, you ever notice our pastor? He never comes in without a tie. I needed a tie. <laughs> <laughs> 
He let me borrow it. So I want to tell him thank you for that. Um, I actually had one this morning, and somewhere between this morning and tonight, lost it. So if you ever go into Callahan and you see a tie in the bathroom somewhere, <laughs> it's probably mine. Um, but uh, I really wanted to, I, I got a scripture, but I want to start for a moment because I feel a spirit leading me in a different way for a moment. And that is, I feel like we're all, we all for different reasons, whether it be sickness or just wear and tear, we're tired. <laughs> and something I wanted to start off with was a moment, because when I'm tired, I've done something. I want to praise God for a church that sacrifices. We were just talking in the men's meeting about oh, yeah, sacrifice. Man. My pastor sacrificed to let me borrow his tie. I mean, I'd be a lot to some of you, but that's big. Y'all sacrificed of the church to reach out to the community without, we talk about money because we know we didn't make, probably didn't make any money. But that wasn't the point. It was to reach the community. It was to show others you love them. It was to sacrifice. And you, this church, we, we ain't really a young church. Y'all pay the price. You pay the price today. But that price is for Jesus. And we can praise his name today. Praise his name. That we had an opportunity to serve him. I can praise his name today. That he died on the cross for me, but he gave me the power through him and his blood to serve him. To give of myself. To love others. To give him glory. We don't get glory for yesterday. He does. He does. But we do praise his name that he gave us the strength to do it and then be here today as a church yeah. to go, thank you, Lord, for who you are. We serve you. We sacrifice. We give to you, Lord. And our sacrifice compared to yours is right. nothing. Amen. Nothing. But I do. I do. I want to celebrate it with you, my brothers and sisters, because I wasn't able to be here yesterday. But I thank God for a church that puts out what they do and what they did. Thank you. Amen. It is just a glorious thing. Lord, amen. My sisters got us up there on the wall. I'm going to be sharing today quite a bit. It's really a, a synopsis of different parts of my testimony today, too. But it's, 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 let's just go there. Let's start. What do you know about God? Before we dig in, what do you, each one of you individually, yeah. really know about God. And then how did you get to know that? How did you get the thing that you know about God? I know some things about my life. I know them. I understand this is part of who she is. It's like bedrock. If I push this certain button, I'm going to get this certain response. You know what I'm saying? We, we all kind of know that. Am I right? Brothers and sisters, am I right? All right. But God, once you know it, you know it. We're going to start off with one of my first things I ever learned about God as a young person. So Proverbs, <laughs> Proverbs 15, 3. It's all turning there together. I'm going to, as I've got it on my notes, and I'm turning my Bible so I can give you all time to find it too. Proverbs 15, 3. Before we read it, I'm going to tell you about this story of how I found this scripture, when I found it, and why it means so much to me. So my mama, I, I, was, I was raised up by a single parent mom. She was, she was divorced when I was two. She was the baby of the baby. Okay, she's out there working, trying to make ends meet, and she figured out how to sacrifice and put me into a private school. Wow. I remember to this day walking around that school and I can tell you many of the scriptures still in my head because I can see them framed on the wall yeah, come on. at the school. Yeah. How many of us have some scriptures That's on the wall yeah. at our home? Come on, man. How many of you kind of, seriously, yeah. they disappear out of our mind a little bit because you pass it every day? Right. That's because we've been there as our home. But when you see little ones walk into your home, yeah. when you see an, 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 someone who doesn't live there walk into your home, mm -hmm. you have a guest in your home, and they see that scripture on that wall, it makes a difference. Come on. 
I saw the scripture on the wall. Proverbs 15, 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. I want you to think for a moment about the effect of an unsaved child. Yes, I was raised in church, but when you start reading that scripture, what effect does that have? Yeah, I knew who God was, but now I'm starting to go, He what? He watching me. Yeah. I'm starting to gain a little fear. A little concerned. God's watching me. Maybe I ought to trim up. God's watching me. What does that mean? That changed over the years because a little later in life, I'll I, I tell you one of the, my favorite ways to study scripture is fear. Word studies. So a little later in life, I did a word study on fear. The fear of the Lord. Do it one day. Right. Study it. Read it. You'll find out this is a healthy thing for us to have. A proper, reverent, respectful fear of the Lord. Yeah. To understand that He is a gracious, mighty, wonderful, powerful judge, <coughs> jury, yeah. everything. He makes the final decision, yeah. but He loves me, and He loves you. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you won't pay a price for your sin. That doesn't mean that sin doesn't have a price and a cost. That's the reason he is who he is. He's an unchanging God for a reason. And he's the reason. That is the reason. His nature is why Jesus had to die on the cross for right. us. Right. Understanding who he is is critical to that. This scripture began my journey to understanding a key component of who God was. Because he sees all. He sees it. He knows it. Next scripture. We're going to go to Hebrews 14, 13, 4, 13. So as we turn there, I like, I love this old church because of this reason. It mentions I love my technology. I like having my Bible. One day the power is going to go out. I still got paper. I got quite a few copies just in case. <laughs> Hebrews 4.13 Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him whom we have to do. Simple scripture. Again, young child. The word naked. Ooh, what is that? But as you grow and read and understand the context here, that it, he knows all of me. He knows me at the core of who I am. He knows me no matter what I try to cover up with. He knows me no matter what I front I want to put up, what kind of uh, show I want to put on. He knows me. This, Scary, and then as I became a Christian, glorious. Because he knows me. Hold on, hold on to your heart, seats for a minute. He knows me and still loves me. He knows me intimately to the core of who I am, the nastiest place I've ever been in, or whatever I've done, and loves me. He knows me. Planned from before the womb yeah. for my, my personal reconciliation to him Hallelujah. through the death of his son. Amen. He knows me. Hebrews 13, 8, the next one. He never changes. Notice of you know this verse, I'm sure. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I'm going to stay here a minute because this part really got me. Took me a while. I had to relearn over and over again because I want to make him change. I want to change my religion. 
How many of you, as we've been, how many people have been Christian saved more than 10, 15, 20 years? Amen. How easy is it for us to go down the path and start adding things to the religion? I need to do this. He can't love me anymore because I did that. Right. I don't feel right because he can't. We see where I'm going with this? Yeah. A constant battle. Yeah. Because we don't want to accept the simplicity and beauty and reality of righteousness that has nothing to do with my actions. Come on. My actions, the only action, the only thing is to submit to him. And he doesn't change. Oh, Whether man. that submission is at the foot of the cross for salvation Amen. or in your day-to-day -day walk, you don't earn righteousness because you're now a Christian. You've got to go do right to be right. No. Come on. Come on. You don't earn it. No. You live in it through the relationship with him. That's right. It powers you to then be righteous because he made you righteous oh, by the blood yeah. of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. And the moment you take some piece of that and say it's my responsibility, you are cheapening his death on the cross and his resurrection. You are so right, brother. Amen. It is not of me, no part of me. I don't belong to be up here on the stage. I don't deserve to be anywhere. But I am here, and I'm standing here strong for one reason. It's because he made it possible. Because he called me. Because he chose me. Because he moved on me. I mess up every day. I sin every day. As Paul says, the chief is the sinners, that's me. I go away from here and I bet you the moment I get in the car, I'm doing something wrong. Come on now. Without a doubt, I struggle every day. I'm struggling this week with loving people. Really loving people. How much have I struggled with loving people around here? Come on. I have a struggle with loving people. Come on, bro. I have a struggle because I want to put conditions on it. They didn't do what I wanted them to do. There you go. No, I didn't do what he wanted me to do. He never changes. Because he, I ain't, I ain't got time to move yet. I got to stay here for a minute. He doesn't change. That doesn't change me. No, it does. Because the more he doesn't change, the more he draws me, the closer he brings me to him, the, the more he affects me. Guess what? Yeah. I become more, even though I change from the old self, the more I'm like him, those pieces that he's changed stay. Amen. You hear me? Yeah. I'm becoming like him in the ways, not because of what I do, but because of what he does. Uh, he is, uh, amen. You become more like him. Thank you, Lord. That's not prideful to say that because it's, well, who's doing it? I'm not doing it. He's doing it. But become more like him. You become more merciful. You become more gracious to others. You become more loving. You become more giving. Sacrificing of yourself for others. Giving of yourself for others. Not because you want to be, oh, I want to do it for me. Look at me. No, because he's called you to love others and given you not only the power to do it, but the motivation in your heart because guess what? You're not doing it for self righteousness. You're doing it because you want to love somebody. <coughs> Amen. Next one, Matthew nineteen twenty six. Matthew nineteen twenty six. I'm going to take a sip of water. I need to take a breath. <coughs> Matthew nineteen twenty six. I know she's got it on the screen behind me, but we are going to find it in this paper. There's not a she back here. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry, Brother Gary. <laughs> Once I get up here, brother, I'm blind. <laughs> 1926. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Right. I could have picked a hundred different verses in the Bible for this one. And I like this one because you got, I'm going back. I'm going to teach, I'm trying to explain to you how I got to these places and through my life. A young fellow in a Christian school being taught principles of God. Of course, they talk about things like 
the planets and the universe and the size of the universe and the size of planets. I've heard the old saying, can God make a rock that's too big that he can't pick it up? All these kind of things. But guess what? That's not the hardest thing out there. Come on. The, to me, the hardest thing out there is changing the heart of a man. That is exactly right. Changing the heart of a man. There's taking me. my heart, my evil, that I had the capability of being and doing. Y'all, I know God saved me young for a reason. Praise God. I'm, 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 we were talking, I don't remember who I was talking to right now. But how many times I, I could have died coming up? I think we were in Sunday school this morning. Is that right? I did so many stupid things. I made so many stupid choices. From as simple as a child climbing a tree to, I don't want to go into all my sins. That's not what we're here for. But stupid. And my God saved me and preserved me through it because of why? Because you go back, he's everywhere and he's everywhere all the time. He didn't predestine me to be saved, but he knew that I was one of his. And he had a purpose and a plan for me from the start. Amen. From the start. He knew every hair on my head from the day I was born and came out of my mama's womb to the day I'm going to die because one day I'll either die or he'll call me up. That's and when right. that happens, he knows everything already before it ever happened. Does he, did he predestine it? No. But he knows it. That's the way he is. He doesn't exist in time. He exists outside of time because he created time. These are things you can grab a hold of. These make a difference in how we live. These make a difference in how we think and how we believe. Because once you grab the truth of God, because he doesn't change, because he doesn't change, if you can write that truth on your heart and graving it in, you will live by it because it's more bedrock than this pulpit sitting here. It's more bedrock than this foundation of this church. Because the foundation of this church, this earth itself will go away, but he will never change. He will never go away. You will be with him for eternity. If you want to live for eternity with a holy, righteous God who loves you enough to give his only son, then you you, what do you got to do? Submit and accept his son's sacrifice. Thank you, Lord. He is all powerful. When I don't see an answer, when I, in my 35 plus years, 45 plus years of being saved, can't see how when we still 45 years later doubt when I'm 45 if you've been saved six months if you've been saved 45 right. years I'm getting across the point right. I got this I know what the bedrock is but until I dig into that bedrock and grab a hold of it it can creep in Amen. we can worry and we can care we can concern, be concerned, but we need to grab a hold of that anchor, grab a hold of that foundation, and where's my faith? Is it in me and what I'm trying to do, or is it in him? Come on. I want to fix it myself, or what I want to wait on him? Do I want to go try to do it myself? Oh, I've got to fix this. This has got to change. Help us, Lord. Because that feels like I'm doing it myself, and I'm getting stressed out, and I'm trying my hardest to fix it. And, oh, Lord, just let me fix it. And he's telling me to shut up, sit down, and let him work. Because he's got it. Because some things aren't meant for me to fix. It's to trust. Because he's an all-powerful God. He's an all-knowing God. He's a God who's everywhere all the time. Yeah. And if I'm over there trying, I'm getting all stressed out and I'm all worried about something, guess what? He's the one who's got it. Hallelujah. Grab a hold of what you know, and if you don't know much, just live with what you got. That's right. Because these things are simple, and right there in Scripture, every one of us can grab them. Come on. Good word right there, buddy. Good word. Lord help me. Blessing. 1 Peter 1.3. 1 Peter 1.3. We're going to move from a Attributes is what we call them to characteristics real quick for a minute. First Peter 1 3. I'm 
Well, that would turn perfectly. I hope you are ready. <laughs> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy, abundant mercy, hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. That's right. A lively hope. Abundant mercy. But tied into one thing. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. My acceptance of Christ and Christ's sacrifice. That's what it has to be. Not because I walk in the doors of that church. That's right. Not because my mama saved. Not because my mama raised me in church. Yeah. Not because Brother Buddy gave me a tie tonight and put me on stage. Yeah, not at all. But solely and completely residing on the blood of Jesus Christ and my acceptance of Him. Amen. Of Him. A lively hope. What does that mean? How about that? What does that mean? A lively hope. Amen. What does it mean to you? I'll tell you what it means to me. That means when the darkest of times has come, when a death has occurred, or some other catastrophic moment in your life, I remember losing a loved one, excuse me, losing a loved one, and getting that phone call. That even in the midst of that phone call, I knew who my Savior was. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean it didn't hurt. That's right. But it means I knew Amen. where my security was. Amen. I knew where eternity was. Yeah. Because of that loved one that I happened to know that that loved one knew where their security was and knew where their eternity was. That yeah. I not only have a hope, I got a lively hope. Amen. I got a hope that tells me that this old body, as hard as I'm working to try to lose some weight and get to feeling better, that one day he's going to give me a new one. Hallelujah. Then one day I'm going to be sitting in paradise with him. Not for one day, but for eternity. Amen. That this is just a vapor of time. They want to say the earth has been here X number of billions of years. I go by scriptures and creation and things and learn that maybe it's been here 7,000. I don't really care if it's been here 200 billion years or not. Because what's going to matter is that's still a vapor compared to eternity with Jesus. Right. Amen. I'm going to be with Jesus for eternity, and that is nothing but a vapor. It's gone. Come on. That's my lively hope, guys, because this period of time, we want, I, want to hold, I, do, I want to hold on to the flesh. I want to hold on to money. I want to hold on to my job. I want to hold on to my local family and friends and relationships. Jesus said, whose family? Who is my family? My family isn't the family here. My family is God. Hallelujah. I hope and pray my family goes all with me 100% to heaven. And they are my heavenly family. Right. But my family is Jesus. Hallelujah. My family is God. Amen. You that are in here that are saved are my family. Amen. <coughs> That's right, buddy. Amen. A lively hope full of abundant mercy. Oh, I'm dry throat tonight. Abundant mercy. I'm going to stay there for a minute. Because he's not only a God of hope, but he's also a God of mercy. Yeah, We've got a verse coming up, Moral Mercy. But I've got to talk now about mercy. There's two things. Mercy. When I don't get something I actually deserve, and I ain't talking about a rose and a million dollars. I'm talking about that punishment that I deserve. When I don't get it. And we talk about Christ paying the price, right, for our sin. I know he paid the price for sin. I know he reconciled me to the cross. But if I'm a Christian, I'm still sinning today. Guess what? There's still a price today for sin. Yeah. Sometimes he even lets you have mercy for some of that. I know how, and I can tell you how, one example, when your loved one becomes the hand and feet of Christ and your loved one shows you mercy, sometimes we don't deserve it. Right. Sometimes. Y'all hear me? Yeah. Yet, how often do we not exhibit the same mercy to those around us? Yeah. I want to be more like him. And this is the area that I got to commit and confess to my brothers and sisters that I really have a hard time sometimes. I really want to lay the judgment down on some people. Come on. 
Sometimes the closest people to my life, my sure. wife, sure. my son, sometimes maybe even my pastor, because I'm, I'm, you know, he can't do that. Come on. Brother Chris, it's easy when you got brothers that are close and you think you got the right to say something, right? Come on now. But God calls us to be merciful to those around us and love them. Treat them the way we want to be treated. He gives us abundant mercy and he gives us the ability. Here's where we're here. He's calling us to be like him. Am I not right? Absolutely. You're called to be his hands and feet and be like him. He's given you the power through the Holy Spirit that lives in you to be like him. Yet we don't tap into that Holy Spirit. We don't listen to that Holy Spirit. We don't reside in that Holy Spirit like we should. I want to be more like him. Next, a God of truth. A God of truth. This one hurt. John 17, 3, and we're going to read verse 17 in the same verse, in the same chapter. John chapter 17. You'll know one of these, I'm sure. John 17, 3 says, Did I get the right verse? Yep. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Yes, amen. So, life eternal is to know Jesus. I don't mean know as in you know the name. I've heard the name Jesus Christ. You've seen him or heard of a movie out there called Jesus Christ Superstar. That don't make you saved because you know a name. This is a little bit more biblical. No, you know Jesus. Verse. 17. Now this is the one that really, really gets it from me. Sanctify them through thy, wor thy truth. Thy word is truth. Right. Sanctify them through thy truth. And then he tells us, thy word is truth. Amen. I was talking to the pastor tonight. We were talking about in different times over there in the room about preparing for preaching. And I find it difficult to prepare for preaching. We all kind of do, but I especially do. I, I'm tempted to want to lay out, and I've got a pretty good number of verses, but everybody knows I've laid out <laughs> quite a few before where we're like going from Genesis all the way to Revelation in the same night. <clears throat> the reason for that is sometimes if, if y'all stay, I'd talk about it. I love the Word. I'd probably spend a day or two just in Psalm with you. We can sit there and just talk about the Psalms. I got a playlist on my phone, if you ever want to learn how to do that kind of thing, where I just play the Psalms and I go to sleep with that. I love it. I love the Word. And the sanctification by the Word comes from dwelling in the Word. Not just this Word, but the other Word is Jesus. Your relationship with a holy and righteous God, that Holy Spirit that lives within you. doesn't He speaks to you here, but he lives in here and speaks to you here. We need to dwell in the word. We need to absorb this word. The more we absorb this word and let that Holy Spirit talk to us in here, they're agreeing. Yeah. You need to hear me out. Sometimes you hear, I got to come down from it. I'm, I'm just, I feel it. Sometimes you hear voices that ain't the Holy Spirit. Right? Sometimes you talk to yourself and you say things to yourself that is not godly. I messed up. That was bad. They're never going to love me. God didn't tell you that. God loves you. No matter what you're doing, he loves you. He doesn't love your sin. He loves you. You are his. You're called to be his. You're called to live in righteousness through his blood. Don't let yourself inside of you, the devil, whatever you want to call it, those other voices win. Listen to what the Holy Spirit tells you. And if you can't tell the difference, get in this word more. Come 
So you can tell the difference. Amen. Let that Holy Spirit live and work in your life. Let your mind be changed by the washing and regeneration of this word. Because if you're sitting there pouring in the TV and the other books and the things out there of the world, you're not going to get that washing and regeneration by the word. Right. Right. Amen. This word will change your life. This word will change your heart. This word will regenerate that old filthy carnal mind into something that you never thought it could be. Because our minds, our carnal self, they are bad. But he promised that he would bring us to life through his word. That's right. I have a bunch of scriptures on that one that I really wanted to talk about. We're going to keep it short tonight. John 14, 6. John 14, 6. Y'all knew I was going to go here with this one. I mean, how many of y'all were probably thinking this scripture before I read it? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other way. There is no Buddha. There is no Muhammad, no Allah. There is no uh, reaching the Zen and attaining unto God through just enlightening yourself. You cannot do it. There is nothing that can bring you back into a reconciliation with the God, our God, the Father who created you. Right. You have a God-shaped hole in your life that cannot be filled by anything but a relationship with a holy God. Amen. Because of sin severing you in that relationship. Jesus is the only way, the way to truth, revealing right. the truth. You will not know truth until you have Jesus. Amen. You will be deceived by the devil and his lies until you know Jesus. You will believe anything. You look at the world today. They will believe anything. The world will believe anything. They'll spit out stuff. And I, I'm not going into politics. They will spit out stuff you know right now. It's plain, absolute foolishness. Because they don't know Jesus. There is double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. <laughs> Scripture talks about that. One mind... The Holy Spirit and Jesus. All right. Now, the wrap up. Titus 3, 5 through 7. Titus 3, 5 through 7. And it's a little book. It takes me a second to find that one. All right. Titus 3, 5 through 7 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. But by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified... By his grace, yep. we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That's right. <coughs> Straight up, right there, my Baptist friends, yep. not by works of righteousness. Amen. I'm going to say it one more time not by works of righteousness, yep. not because you've been in church since the dawn of time. Not because you walk through these doors and come to church on Sunday morning. I struggled with that so hard. Been saved since I was seven. And as I got older and my brain started taking over all the things, I got too smart for it and started putting my day-to-day -day walk in religion. Religion. Religiosity. Getting out here and doing what I thought was right. And there is no happiness in that. Come on now. None at all. And we still, <coughs> I see it, I feel it, I do it myself. We tend to want to keep going back to that old slop. Come 
Because that is nothing. He calls it filthy rags. Y'all know what that means. There's certain types of rags. Those are filthy rags. We don't mess with those. <coughs> Y'all, we keep going back to them and using them again. Come on. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. He calls you. Calls you to be saved. He, he drew you. You responded. Come on. My pastor's called it this morning, and man, I love the way he put it. He calls me every day. There's nothing I do good at truth of any righteousness except that he calls me. It's the first time I've heard that put that way. And I love it because it really brings it down to simplicity. It's not up to me to get in the morning to make a list. It's up to me to get in the morning and submit my will to him. There it is. Then let him call me to what there I'm doing today. Is. Let him tell me what I'm doing today. Well, let him direct my ways. Yeah. In all my ways, acknowledge him, all and right. he shall direct my paths. Amen. The first part of that is trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord in all your ways. Trust in the Lord with all my heart, and lean not to all thine understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he all shall right. direct thy paths. i got to say the whole verse or I'll get all messed up. All right. Trust the Lord. Hallelujah. Trust the Lord. Bless not yourself. Put it in the relationship with Jesus and let him do what he wants to do. We want to grab the reins. We want to take the will. I want to take the glory for myself. Because that's what you're doing. The moment you grab the reins and take the will, you're doing it for righteousness sake, for you. Guess what? what? For you, for me, for I. I want it for him. I'm hot. Which he, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to talk about the Holy Ghost much. Are we afraid of the Holy Ghost? We don't. We talk about God and Jesus living, but we don't really talk about the Holy Ghost living in us. Through us yes, and empowering does. us. Yes, he does. But he does. Get quiet enough. Put your phones down long enough. Yes. Turn off the TVs. Get rid of the distractions. Get alone with God. Let God speak to you through the Holy Ghost. <coughs> I don't do it enough. Come on. I work hard to try to do it as much as I can. <laughs> that being justified. By his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the biggest and final point. We'll be having an invitation in just a minute. I don't say the biggest, but this is one of the ones I'm struggling with today. I struggle with this because I don't understand the fullness of his grace. Because we're not talking about mercy here. I'm going to leave all that there. Brother Rick, you can get ready. We're not talking about mercy here. We're talking about living in the power of His grace. His grace, unmerited favor yeah. Yeah. of His relationship with me. That relationship that all I did was submit to. Uh, the unmerited favor of being a son of God. The unmerited favor that because another son of God died and put his blood down for me. Now I stand in right relationship with a holy, righteous God who loves me to the point I can't grasp it. I don't get it. It is so hard to totally grasp. I don't know that I could ever do it. But living in that power of that grace... Being able to exhibit to others the things, the power that Jesus had. Showing others Jesus here on this earth. No, I'm not Jesus, but I, because of what he's done, because of the blood he's applied to me, I can be his hands and feet on the planet earth right now. I can be his hands and feet to others. People, others, my pastor, my wife, are already his hands and feet to me. I just talked about that. Because they're showing me mercy. They're showing me grace. We need to live in the grace and in the mercy. 
and show it to others. But we have such a hard time. I have such a hard time of A, forgiving myself and living, and B, accepting his leadership. Thank you, Lord. Accepting his leadership. Because it's not just, oh, go lay down at the foot here and surrender. It's when I wake up this morning and get up and I'm putting my shoes on and I have a plan for what I want to do today and he shows me something else he wants me to do today. Yeah. It's walking a different walk. It's walking a path he chooses. It's making different choices in life that you don't necessarily of yourself want to make. And I don't just mean sin. I mean self. Is self sin if it's not of God? Yeah. It is, guys. Is there anything of me, of myself, that will be okay with God if it's not what God directed? Nope. That's hard to take. I mean, I can't have anything of me left? That's right. No, you can't. But then you'll have everything left because you'll have all the things he directed, which is the part that you need to get rid of, is all the fit, sin and all the nastiness and let him be who he wants to be in you. You'll be restored to the person that he designed you to be in the first place. That's why we surrender. And I can't get it. But I'm going to get it because I keep going every day to the foot of that cross and let him have his way. Amen. That's what this call is for you today. This altar's up here because today is a new day. Tonight's a new night. Tomorrow's a new day. We, ha we have been, had a whole lifetime behind us. Every one of us out here. I don't know that there's a really, there's a few young people, but tomorrow's a new day. I don't care if you're 18 or 80. Tonight, when you get up from here and go out that door, it's a new opportunity to serve him. If you've never met him and surrendered, don't leave today because you never know what's going to happen when you walk out that door. Your life is not granted one more second. You could die right now. Wow. Go ahead, Rick. Thank you. Stand with me. The altars are open. The gospel message has been preached. It is up to you to respond. That Holy Spirit dealing with you. This is the place to be and get it right. Let him work in your life a change. Because without submission to him, you're not going to change. You're going to keep fighting the same battles over and over again and not see change. But submission to Christ, submission to that Holy Spirit, letting your way be put off to the side, let him have his way.
appreciate that word. Anybody have anything to share tonight before we do this? All right. Um, as, watch as we're looking at it, I think our next big thing coming up is our homecoming and revival. That's what we're looking for. Starting October uh, the 9th is our homecoming, and then 10th, revival. So we got to be praying. I trust you guys have been doing that in the prayer room. I pray you've been doing it in your homes. We start making it the most important thing that we do, that we pray, that God will change our hearts. And when we pray for revival, I know what we like to normally think of that is, is that God's going to bring a lot of souls to know him as personal Savior. And that would be wonderful. I'm okay with that. But that's not what really revival is all about. Revival is about taking those of us that already know him as personal Savior and igniting that fire that's inside of us. And bringing us into a place where we can take the word of God and we can go and reach those that are lost and dying and bring them in. Amen? So get us, get us fired up and all back where we need to be. So be praying about, Lord, how can I, how can I be drawn close to the cross of Calvary once again? All right. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the word of God that you brought to us through Brother Wade. Lord, your mercy and your grace is immeasurable. And I thank you today that you have extended it to us in such a way that there's nothing, there's no way that we could ever outrun that grace. We ask now, Lord, that you would just teach us to rest in the assurance of that salvation and be at peace with the fact that God has settled our sin debt and work as children of God to be more and more like Jesus, your son. We glorify you tonight. Ask your blessings upon each and every one as we go into the work week. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Don't forget, um, Wednesday, nursing home at Edgewood is probably very questionable. But at 2 o'clock at River City, if you're able to go, that will be great. And then Thursday, 2 o'clock at Lakeside, if you're able to go. Love to have you. I haven't been. You want to go on? I know that. I Broadcast in this recording. Last time you had a crush. <laughs> <laughs> 